If I break something, if I ruin the energy that I had in stepped when I go to spline, I can very easily Today's video is kind of a workflow, kind of a tool, kind of a tip. It could be a lot of different things depending on how you use it, but either way, I think you're gonna like what you find in today's video. We're talking about animation layers. If you haven't used them before, hopefully this video will show you some really cool ways that you're gonna wanna use them in the future. And if you do already use them, maybe I'll show you a few things that you don't already know. We'll see. I'm Sir Wade, welcome back to another video. Also, quick reminder, I go live three times a week over on Twitch, so if you wanna hang out and do some animation stuff live. Also, I am now doing kind of an animation tutoring over on my Patreon, so link below if you're curious about that. And finally, we just crossed 3,000 members on the Discord server, so if you wanna come meet new people and hang out, talk about animation, talk about your shot, get some feedback from other people, all that kind of stuff, link below to my Discord. Fantastic place to be. All right, I think that's everything. Let's get into the video. Let's talk about animation layers. All right, so jumping into Maya, down in the bottom right corner, we have display layers. And I have talked about this in my Maya tips videos, which you should definitely watch if you haven't seen yet. A lot of good tips in here. But if we switch over to the Anim tab, it takes us to the animation layers. Now you may or may not have messed with this before, but right now there's nothing here or is there? There kind of is. There is a hidden base animation layer that we don't ever see because if you don't need to worry about it, why show it to you? If I take the hip control where I can grab this character, move him around, I'm gonna hit S, set a key, right? And I can go through my timeline and set a bunch of keys, right? I got all these little tick marks. Where am I setting those keys and where are those keys actually going? They're going on to a hidden animation layer that's really not complicated. So if that's freaking you out, don't worry about it because here's what we do. If I go to the animation layers drop down, we can see that I can create an empty layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that. When I create an empty layer, it actually makes two layers. It makes base animation and anim layer one. Now, base animation was already there to begin with. We just didn't see it because we didn't have any other layers. It didn't show us anything. But now that we've activated the layers panel, that is actually where we set our keys. You can see there's a little green highlight icon to show that that's the active layer. There's our keys really nothing's changed. But there is a new anim layer one, which is currently empty because I told it to be an empty layer. So nothing really happened yet. Now, as we get into this, let me just quickly explain to you how I first started using animation layers and probably the, the first use case you're gonna wanna use them as well for layering animation. Big surprise there with the name, right? But the first time I used an animation layer, I was doing a freelance project where I had to animate this floating robot who was constantly hovering, always just this up and down motion of the translate Y, constantly. I didn't wanna to have to animate his acting and floating around and all this stuff on top of just this other curve. So what you can do is you can separate them into layers where you have a layer of floaty up and down and a layer of everything else, acting, whatever you want. Okay, so as an example, let's just say I have to animate this robot so that he does this. I just need him to kind of go into three different positions, okay? So let's say that's our animation and that is the shot. For whatever reason, that's what we have to animate. But let's say he also needs to be oscillating up and down, just vibrating up and down, right? Can I go and animate on top of those curves and add that into this translate Y and add that into here? Sure, but that's a pain and it's gonna make it hard to address notes later. So that's a great example of when we would add a layer. So here's what we're gonna do. I've already created anim layer one, it's empty. There's nothing in it. And you can actually look, if I click on the, the layer, the graph editor changes, things kind of disappear. But here's what we're gonna do. When you want to use an animation layer, you need to add any controls that you want to mess with to that layer. They have to be in the layer or it doesn't work. If I just grab anim layer one and say, okay, let's let's set a key on, on this thing. It actually didn't do anything different. It just set a key on my base animation. Like it just set a normal key like we're used to. See, here's a good workflow that I recommend. I'm gonna go ahead and take base animation, which is where all my other animation lives. I'm going to lock the layer, bam. So the keys just went inactive. I can see them there. I can't touch them, I can't mess with it. So that's gonna ensure that if I click on anim layer one, and if I come over here even to my graph editor, I can even see a little drop down that says, am I in anim layer one? Yes, I am. I'm gonna try to set a key on that curve. It's not gonna let me. I hit the button and you'll see a little warning in the script editor down here. Basically what it's saying, is this current manipulator, the current active object of my selection, there's nothing keyable. Or, which is, the, this is the real thing, animation layers are present and the base animation is not selected or it's locked, which is true, we just did that. Why is it complaining? Because we didn't add this control to the anim layer one. It doesn't know it's supposed to work. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to click on that control. And what you could do is you could, you know, shift select, you could grab all the controls. If you wanna be able to do this for everything, that's fine too. But in this case, I'm just gonna grab this one control, go to anim layer one, right click the already existing layer and say, add selected objects. 
Now suddenly something changes. If I were to unlock the base animation layer and click between these, you see how I'm getting this little green badge to the right? It's actually showing me that when I select one, I'm changing which layer I'm in. Now that that control lives in either group, I can be in either one with that control selected. So if we have base animation selected and I scrub through, you can see all the curves. You can see the keys in the timeline. If I select Anim Layer 1, now that that's an active control in that layer, my timeline is empty. There's still animation. So it's interesting, you can actually see the different keyframe stuff, which is why I recommend lock the layer that you're not trying to mess with, just so you know for sure that you're not gonna break your animation. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock base animation. And I could rename that, and let's call this jitter. We want that up and down jitter, right? So with the jitter layer selected, I'm gonna set a key on this curve, and I'll go like two frames forward, move it down, move it two frames forward again, move it up. Actually, I guess I'll just copy paste the value. And I'm just gonna cycle infinity so I don't have to key a million things. But now I have this, this high frequency jitter animated on its own layer. So if someone says, you know what, we need more, I just, I'll make it more. And now it's really aggressive. Now, if that's making it hard to preview our animation, that, that's easy. So again, this is just on its own layer. We can turn this layer off. You'll notice there's a lock button. So if you're done with it, you're like, okay, I don't wanna touch that, I wanna mess with it, I can lock that layer. If I were to mute that layer, it says, cool, jitter is fine, let's not look at it. So now we're back to normal. I can preview my base animation, the regular up, down thing I animated without that jitter influencing it. So this is kind of what I was talking about that when I did the floating robot, I did that up and down drift on its own floating layer and then I just muted it. I animated everything how I wanted and then I turned the layer back on afterwards to see how it all worked together. And I didn't really have to think about it all that much and worry about combining curves and what if I need him to you know, levitate more or less. There's even a, a slider of strength for each layer to say how strong is each layer when you're starting to combine lots of layers. So if I say, okay, let's go back to the regular animation, that's still a lot of jitter. But maybe I don't want to adjust the actual animation I've done. I don't want to mess with these, these keyframes because maybe the keyframes are good. That got signed off on and we're happy with it, but it's just a little much in context with everything else. If I grab a layer, jitter, and I take the, the weight slider, maybe we want half. 0.5, I'll just take that slider to half. We have the same animation, but now it only goes 50% of the influence on our rig. I can take it less. I can just slide this interactively down to 20%. There it is. I can take it down even further to the tiniest little bit of... So this gives you the ability to animate something once, get it to where it needs to be, and then just say how strong of an influence it has. Do you really want it there at 100%? Maybe you do. Let's slide it back up. And this slider is also keyable. You have this little key button here and. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. Now, this is just kind of the first thing. This is like stick a control in a layer, animate it separately, but I wanna show you a few kind of tips for doing this. Luna has come to share some knowledge. Now, if you are animating a floating character or if you're doing the high, you know, high frequency jitter, it's easy to see why you'd want that separate. But let's say you're doing a regular shot. How do animation layers impact your work at that stage? Well, for your regular acting shots or your body mechanics and that kind of thing, you might wanna do breathing. Having that repetitive breathing cycle, you could easily put that in its own layer and just have that run. I actually did something similar in the Zelda animation that I did. And if you haven't seen the full video of how I put this together, that's a really good one, link below as well. But this is a great example because I actually didn't do anything on the base animation layer. If I just hit play, there's no animation. I did everything on its own layer so I could turn it on or off at will. I actually did the breath on its own layer. So the breathing just on one layer. And again, don't judge me too hard. This was a very quick process. It's not a demo reel piece. We go to another layer. There's the dialogue piece. Wake up, Link. All right, but I did the facial stuff on another layer and it's a little stiff, but whatever. And then I don't know if you remember, but I did this very high frequency, just like the breathing. I did these little eye spec thingies having that little tiny motion in the eyes to keep them alive. And if I turn on the breath control, you can see that there's the breathing and you can see how much the eye is moving. So you can see if I turn the breathing way down, there's a lot less motion, things like that. So this is an example of how breaking things into layers and splitting up the weights would be useful in practice for a regular acting shot. Now this is a shot that's still in step blocking. I threw this together in like 20 minutes today for this demo. So again, don't judge me. It's not a demo real piece. I did the blocking on the base animation layer. And that's just because I didn't think about layers. I just, okay, let's start blocking the shot. And so I did, I blocked the shot, this is what we have. Then what I decided to do 
was duplicate that layer. So I right clicked on the base animation layer and I said duplicate. Now just a reminder, no matter how you decide to make new layers, if you're gonna do it from scratch, make sure that you, you select all the controls you're gonna use one by one and you go layer, create from selected, or you grab them all, you right click a layer and you say add selected objects. The main thing here is to make sure that if you're gonna do this kind of stuff, you get every control that you're going to need into that layer. Better to have too many than too little. Because if you start trying to key stuff and then you scrub, and it's kind of like not having auto key on, you scrub and then nothing happens, you just wasted all that time posing because your control wasn't in the layer and so it didn't absorb any of those changes. Anyway, so I right clicked the base animation layer and I duplicated it. So watch closely here, my base animation is all in stepped, jumps from pose to pose, but if I switch over to jump animation, I actually did a spline pass and it's the exact same animation, but I took it to spline. So suddenly it's smooth again, don't judge me, there's some stuff weird with the arms and different things like that. But what's cool here is I'm able to keep my stepped pass in its own layer and leave it alone. So if I didn't have enough keys, if I had something wrong with the timing, if the poses got kind of funky or I started making changes, if I break something, if I ruin the energy that I had in stepped when I go to spline, I can very easily just jump back to my base animation, find the part that I like better, copy, jump back into jump animation, and paste those curves back in. I didn't do a very good job of pasting because I broke some geometry, but you get the idea. I can very easily swap it in and out. I don't have to undo a million times. I don't have to reload an old version, which you should be saving old versions, but it's all still here. I can just swap back and forth and see like, oh, what did I have before? What do I have now? What do I like about that? What do I like about this? It's so flexible. You have options because I can go ahead and play through this. And if any time I don't want to see it, I can mute that layer and it goes back to my stepped version, my base animation. Now, one thing I started thinking was, okay, she has this the cute little jump from you know one log to another. Maybe I wanted to jump higher. Maybe I wanted to jump really high. So what I did is I duplicated the jump animation once I did all the spline. I duplicated that layer again and named it jump anim high. Now if I select her root control and really the feet also because those were also involved. If I go between jump anim one and jump anim high, do you see the difference, the subtle difference right here? a spike in the Y translation because I actually boosted how how high she jumps to pretty pretty high. And actually, let me dial this all the way up so you can actually see it. I make her go really high. So all the animation is the same except she jumps really high. And I adjusted the foot placement. I adjusted some Z translation so that it actually made sense for the animation, which is important. Now I have this ridiculously high jump that makes no sense and no longer works for timing. But the thing that I can do, if I'm trying to push this action, if I'm trying to do this little jump, and originally, let me just mute this, she just has this little hop, right? And maybe that's enough, but maybe I wanna push it and maybe I don't wanna destroy what I've done or break my curve. So non-destructive editing workflow here is I duplicate, I make a new layer and I boost everything up and then I animate it, kind of tweak it so that it still works, it doesn't break anything. And now what I can do, I can right click a layer and by default, there's, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here, but if I go to the very bottom and I go to layer mode, by default, most things go to additive, which means if I have a layer where something goes a couple units to the right and back, and then I duplicate that layer, now I've got two layers having that thing go to the right. So it goes twice as far to the right. And I, if you keep duplicating layers, it'll keep adding and adding and adding and adding on top, compounding that value and amplifying the effect that that layer is having. That's an additive layer where things just kind of stack on top of each other. You can also set it to be an override. Override any other values that we may have. Don't add them all together. The main layer that's in charge, just do that. So what I did is I told the, the high jump animation to be an override layer. That way it doesn't add the two jumps on top of each other, making a crazy high jump. I just said, no, this is the maximum height we're gonna deal with, so just go ahead and override it. Everything else is the same. The only difference is the height of the jump. So what I can do is I can use this slider to control how high she jumps from one being maximum to zero being whatever the layer underneath is originally doing. So I can dial this around to play with different height settings and say, okay, what's 40% of the maximum jump look like? Well, it looks like this. Do I like it? Eh, it's a little much, but it's fun to try. And it's so easy now because I already animated the legs and the, the, the hips and all the pieces to work with the maximum animation. And so if you scale it down, the ratios and how the keys all line up with each other still make perfect sense. So I can move this slider all I want and adjust the height without having to adjust 
all the Translate Ys and the Translate Zs of the legs and the other stuff that I had to do to make it work and tweaking it. So if we watch this jump and say, okay, like, does that feel good? I think that's all right. Jumps a little high, but whatever. Now we can go back and say, all right, compare that to without jump and high. Just go back to the regular spline. That's what we started with. And I can jump back without losing any work. If I decide, yeah, you know what, it wasn't worth any of that, I can just delete that layer and I'm back to where I was. In fact, if I say, you know what, none of this worked, I need to go back to stepped, I just mute both layers and we're back in stepped. It's so easy to go back to earlier versions or to make little adjustments and test things and try things without any fear of ruining your shot. Because we've all been there where we've, we've made changes and then you have to buffer curve snapshot or you have to save a version of your work, or maybe you forget auto keys on or off or something. We've all been in a situation where we're kind of afraid to mess something up, and so you maybe settle for another choice. This allows you to iterate and test stuff without really breaking it. And let's say we've got this nice little happy jump, but you need a version where she's upset, she's mad. And so I have another layer on top of all this stuff, so I can turn back on the spline, I can turn back on the high jump, and then I have another layer that all it does is it moves her neck forward, puts her shoulders up, and curls her fingers into a fist. It's just a pose change. So that's all I did, but with that pose change, I can get an entirely new jump where she's upset and I didn't have to reanimate anything. A few quick tips with this as well. Um, you need to make sure that the order of the layers makes sense. So that angry change isn't reflected in any of the other layers, just that one. So if that angry layer is sitting underneath the other layers, because they're set to override, they're not, the angry is not gonna work. So angry is an active layer, but currently she's not angry. Um, it's because the jump end and the jump end of high, neither one of those has an angry face. They're overriding it. So I need to make sure that angry, I can use these little arrows, boop, boop, is on top. So uh, layers on top have the most power, so top down. And if you don't like having all these buttons here and you'd rather just see the names, you can go to options and say buttons on right and it'll just organize it a little bit cleaner. I'll leave it alone. Now, this tip is super important and it's something that I actually discovered kind of recently. It's something that's super helpful if you're gonna be doing this kind of stuff. I'm gonna go to whatever layer. Do you look at my timeline? Do you notice the color differences when I jump around? These keys are red, these ones are green. Not normal green, either dark green, and these are like pink keys. I highly recommend doing that to your animation layer keys. That way when you click on a layer and you're gonna make changes, you know you're not on your original keys or you're not gonna accidentally mess up your new stuff or whatever it is you're doing. So to do that, if you just select a layer, whatever layer it is, and this little dot is ghost or color layer, if you right click on that, it opens a color index setting that you can just move this slider around to different color values. If I want yellow keys, I hit okay. And now that layer is yellow. As long as I'm on jump anim one, which is my splines layer, I should see yellow keys. And if at any point I end up switching to base animation, it's back to red. I'm like, oh, wait a second. I'm seeing red keys. Am I changing the wrong layer? You'll also see them in your graph editor not the colors, but if you collapse it, you can actually see that, you know, whatever control I've grabbed, it actually has angry, jump at them high, jump at them one, and base at them. You can toggle through the different layers in your graph editor. Double check your graph editor, double check the layer that you have selected, because that's probably the most important thing, which is also accessible in the bottom corner of your graph editor, and the color of your keys. So just make sure you are where you think you are, and if you're worried about it, lock any layer that you're not trying to edit. And also make sure you're only viewing the layers that are gonna help you make the choices. If you're trying to animate your character doing all this stuff, or you know, trying to animate a head turn, for example, and then grab the head, and then say create layer from selected, that's this one on the right here, create layer from selected, all I have here is a layer with the head. I'm gonna go ahead and name it, head turn so I don't get confused. Turn the head some more, set a key, key. And I'm gonna turn her head even more, right? So I can animate the head turn. It's hard to preview if that's what I want. So you may want to disable other layers, turn them off entirely, whatever it is. And I can't turn off the base animation either. So what I can do is I can click the base animation layer, duplicate it, check it to make sure it's good. I'm actually gonna put it back in the place where it was before. Base anim copy. I'm gonna just compare it really quick and it looks like perfect copy. We are all set. I'm actually going to delete everything in the original base animation layer. You can't really do much with the base animation. So if you really want the full customization, keep that layer empty, do everything on an actual self manually created layer. There is nothing on the base animation layer, which is a little scary. So I'll lock it, I'll turn everything else on, and then I'll just solo one layer at a time. My base anim copy, that's my stepped keys, all good. And instead I'm just gonna say, do I like the head turn? So now I can have the head turn and the spline 
or if I just say, I just wanna preview the head turn by itself. Toggling what's on and off will also help you troubleshoot and diagnose so you don't get lost in all of your layers. So this is extremely, extremely useful if you're trying to work in game animation, if you're trying to do cycles and you need to do you know, a regular walk or run cycle or something, and then you need to adjust the pose. Maybe a character's running with regular arms and then you need to do a version where the character's like running like Ed, Ed and Eddie or one running back you know, lean back, another one's leaning forward with arms outstretched. You can edit the pose in a layer on the same cycle to get different versions of that cycle, taking advantage of all the other animation that you've already done. But if you do decide that you want to merge your curves, all you have to do is select any layers that you do want to say, you know what, I'm committing to these two layers. I'm going to shift click them, right click, and I'm going to say merge layers. Save a version before you do your merging. That way, if you don't like the results and it was a lot of data, you can just reload another version and try again. Remember, if you're having issues making layers and changing stuff and you're not able to set your keys properly, it probably means that whatever control you're trying to mess with isn't actually in that animation layer. That's usually the easiest thing to mess up and have a problem with. But if you found this video helpful, informative in any way, make sure to give it a thumbs up so more people can see it. Subscribe if you haven't already so that you can see new videos when I post them. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss the uploads when they come out. And if you have questions, don't forget, links below for Twitch, for Patreon, if you wanna come hang out, ask questions, get more involved, and consider supporting the channel so that I can make more and more videos like this one. But thank you again for watching this video. I really hope it helps. And don't forget to let me know down in the comments below what my tutorials do you want me to tackle next? What kind of stuff are you struggling with that I can hopefully help make a video to make Maya more of a tool and less of an obstacle. Have a great week. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.